I speak to you this morning in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This homily this morning will be the culmination of several things that I have reflected on over the last several weeks in my homilies. And so I'll be sort of reviewing some of the points that I've made in a couple of other homilies before you all over the last couple of months. But I also want to sort of set for us a thematic observation about today's homily. I grew up in a tradition where every sermon had a theme, so uh, even though that's not typical for us, um, I want to think about that this morning. And that theme being the juxtaposition or the reality within our tradition, within our faith, within our experience of our faith, that sometimes the things that are clear become ambiguous and sometimes the things that are ambiguous become clear. Last week, I talked about the memory and community, the relationship between memory and community, and how sometimes the things that were once clear are not so much anymore. Do you remember we talked about directions and how that can sometimes play on things that are no longer as obvious as they were? In point of fact, when Montgomery County was established on September 6, 1776, the demarcation boundary lines for our county, where it separated us from Frederick County, were quite clear to the Maryland General Assembly. Those lines ran on the east side along the Patuxent River and on the west side along the Potomac, and to this day, that's still fairly clear demarcation, but on the south side, the assembly said, oh, well, we'll just run the line from Montgomery County from the mouth of Rock Creek in straight line east to the Patuxent, running along the tree line that exists at Seth Hyatt's plantation. We all know where that is. That's fine. On the north side, it was from the mouth of the Monocacy along the ridge line to Parr's Spring. Now, if you drive up 27, basically just shy of Mount Airy, and you turn off to the right, Parr's Spring still exists. It's this tiny, tiny little lake, or kind of looks like a man-made reservoir. It's still on the maps. If you put it in Google, you'll find it. But these, these demarcation lines, that ridge line, the line especially down south, where the district now kind of abuts because of how the district was carved out of Montgomery County. Those are not clear. What once was clear has become quite muddled, and those demarcation lines are not what they once were. And it's hard for us today, aside from the road signs and notifications that were entering Frederick County or entering the district, it's hard for us to know where those lines are and how to understand the geography and contours of the space and places around us. But equally, sometimes things that weren't clear become clear. So it's both and, and not either or. You might remember four Sundays ago, I mentioned during it was Mother's Day and also the Great Rogation Sunday, that when our parish was established, when Herb and Liv literally went door to door and built the congregation, we were not given parish boundaries. We do not have a geographic footprint. We operate outside of that paradigm. And when we were first established, in some significant ways, we were kind of an affinity parish. We were a parish that people were drawn to because of the community here, not because of some sort of geographical connection. And yet, and yet, over time, we do have a geographical contour. We run as a community more or less over to Mount Airy on the east, to Germantown, Gaithersburg, points a little bit west of that to our west, down to Gaithersburg, Laytonsville area on our south, all the way up to 
Urbana, Imesville on our north, we, we can kind of map out who we are. And our community, our geographic footprint has become clearer with time. And we have a better sense of who we are within that space. And the reality is that those are significant points of reflection for us to think about. What is clearer today that was more ambiguous in the past, and what was possibly clearer in the past that is more ambiguous today? And you might wonder what that has to do with our readings, but I want to suggest to you that that question, that framework, that point of reflection, is at the heart of our lessons, all three of them, from the Old Testament lesson to our reading from Romans to our gospel passage from Matthew chapter 9. Because what all of those readings point to, and specifically what the life and faith experience of Abraham, Abram turned to Abraham, and the faith, life, and experience of Jesus and his disciples, what they point to is the transient nature of our faith, the dynamism of our faith, our faith being a people on the move, not a people settled, not a people stuck in their ways. Stanley Hauerwas, in his great commentary on the Gospel of Matthew, observes this about chapter 9, about the reading we have today, about this interaction both with this man and his sick daughter and the woman seeking restitution of health. He says, Jesus never tarries. Like foxes and birds, he is always on the move. The kingdom is a movement that requires him to go to those whom, to whom he has been sent. That he must go to those in need indicates that the gospel is not and cannot be a set of beliefs. I want to reiterate that really quickly. That the gospel is not and cannot be a set of beliefs. The gospel is this man. And this man must encounter actual men and women in order to call them into the community of the new age. Evangelism is people meeting and coming to know people. People meeting and coming to know people. That is the reality of our call and mission in this world. We are a people on the move. We are a dynamic presence in this world. We are not static. We are not a certain place and time and point but we are constantly evolving and growing and seeking to grow more fully into the reality that God is putting before us. And so what does that look like? What does that mean for us, who we are and what we're on about? Well, I want to offer kind of an answer in relationship to the twofold reality that I uh, addressed or that I named a few moments ago. On one hand, that dynamism means that things that were clear may become more ambiguous over time. We, when we were first established, you know, I said we had kind of an affinity uh, uh, group. People sought us because of the community, but we were nevertheless St. Anne's in Damascus. We still have that in our very name. Our address is Damascus. There is a sense, a significant sense, in which we are rooted to the community of Damascus. But the reality, the reality we face today is that our presence is much more ambiguous than the contours of the Damascus community. Exactly as I was talking about when I was talking about our geographic footprint, we have folks that come from all over the place. We have folks that are drawn to us in ways that move us outside of the rootedness of this particular community just to our north. In point of fact, I've heard over the course of my time here the adage the repeated adage 
that people don't come north. That one of our barriers is that people don't travel away from the Beltway, away from 270. They don't go north, they go south. But that's not true. That reality is no longer as clear as it once was. We are a people on the move, in a community on the move, in a world on the move. And what once was a rootedness is now much more ambiguous. And we have an invitation. We have an invitation to step into that reality, step into that new presence, discern a new way of being in the world around us. But on the other hand, things that were once ambiguous are now made more clear. Even as our geographic footprint has expanded, one of the realities that we have learned from our tending our soil work is that just within a 10-minute drive of this parish, whether we go north or south or east or west, within 10 minutes, there are a thousand people who are currently looking for a church home currently seeking a faith community to be a part of. And we have, we have a clarity of call in that, a clarity to move and be present to the needs and the desires and the seeking of those people. And how might we be present more fully to that reality too? Now, I bring all of this up today because the truth is that this is our fundamental call to be those people proclaiming the good works that God is doing in this world and to be present to the needs of those around us even as we might face uncertainties even as we might face a level of uncertainty or distrust or ambivalence by the community around us, a level of ridicule maybe, if there are certain things that we stand on that the community around us does not, a certain level of distrust and discord. But if we stand, if we stand with Jesus, if we stand on the side of those who need us, stand on the side of the marginalized, the alienated, stand on the side of the broken and hurting in this world, then we stand in the place of life. We stand in the place of transformation. We stand in the place of love. And we stand in the reality of God and the work that God is doing around us and about us in this world. And so our invitation today, as we reflect on both moving into a state of greater ambiguity, while simultaneously moving into a state of greater clarity, we move forward ever more fully into the work that God is calling us to do and calling out of us and that's going to be the focus after the service of our town hall the focus of this work that we are on about within the tending our soil initiative to have a sense to have a sense of where we are being called into uncertainties where we are being called to embrace an unknown but also where we are called to offer a clarity, offer a concreteness, offer a word of reprieve to a world seeking an assurance, an assurance that things that are broken will be made whole, that things that are uncertain will be made more clear. And by communicating that truth, we will change. We will not be who we are or who we have been. That's that uncertainty factor. But we will be ever more clear about our mission and ever more drawn into the heart of the work that God is calling us to do. 
And so I invite us today to be mindful of the ways that things are both clear and unclear. Things are both concrete and ambiguous. The ways in which our faith is a faith of movement. Our faith is a faith of community. Our faith is rooted in a gospel that is a person. That is a person who transformed this world. And that our movement forward, just like Abram, just like the disciples, just like all of our forebears in the faith, is a faith of movement, a faith of transformation, a faith of love. And as we live into that love, we will be transformed. And we will transform the world around us. So let us embrace that anew. And let us evermore feel the power of Christ's transformation in our lives, in this community, and in the world around us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.